Coming up on today's Wolfpack News, a glimmer of hope as more people get vaccinated, what this means for Loyola and in-person classes in the fall. A room for students to get business clothes for free, find out how students can grab whatever they need for their next job interview. Plus, more bikes are being stolen. Find out what lock you should use to keep your bike safe. And a cold and refreshing dessert. These stands just opened up back for business. Find out where to get your next snowball. Welcome to this week's Wolfpack News. I'm Shadara Moore. And I'm Gracie Wise. We have a lot of news to cover today. Loyola is working to vaccinate more people on campus. Our own reporter sat down with a resident assistant and a professor to hear how they feel about the shot. Also today, the CDC came out with new guidelines for people who have been fully vaccinated. We'll break it down for you. Plus, Loyola is looking to the future, announcing that we will have full capacity in-person classes in the fall. We'll explain what that could look like. But first, there's a lot of uncertainty in the world right now with vaccines and when students and faculty will be able to get them. But here at Loyola, there's a sense of hope. Reporter Mount Jamela is live at Beaver Hall to explain the process. Thanks, Gracie. I just spoke with Brilana Lassier. I'm standing here in front of Beaver Hall, who was lucky enough to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. She tells me it feels like the university is going a step in the right direction. When I received the email saying that I was qualified to become vaccinated, a lot went through my mind. I said, holy crap, I'm actually getting the vaccine. I'll be vaccinating myself for them to protect them because me being an RA, I'm always around a lot of people and me flying back and forth, I'm always going to be around people. So it was better judgment. It was a better judgment call for me to protect those around me. While uncertainty still lingers on campus, hope isn't one of them. The university reported all staff was eligible to receive the vaccine, a turn some say they never saw coming. Seeing that they're rolling out these vaccines really fast, and now there's the Johnson & Johnson, which is one vaccine, so they can really start mass vaccinating people. You know, they don't have to worry about them not coming back for their second shot. You know, it's like, you got your one shot, hey, you know, going your merry way kind of thing, um, you know, uh, going uphill and, 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 and in the right direction. Um, and I hopefully by the spring we'll be back to normal. Um, <clears throat> it'll be nice to see people's faces again. I, I can't wait till we can get rid of the mask. While the campus has moved to adapt to its fair share of social distancing measures and mask mandates, the university has been left feeling empty, what seems like forever to some. Some students say they can't help but be excited for what's in store. Really exciting to see that um, and definitely just the idea that hopefully soon we can get back to some sense of normalcy um, and just the idea that like yeah we are seeing an increase in people getting the vaccine is just really exciting in general um, and it just like gives me a little bit of hope I think. <laughs> it makes me feel privileged like honestly I don't use that word a lot, and I use that word very sparingly, but it does make me feel privileged because I understand that there are not people, there are a lot of people that I know who's not going to be able to get the vaccine right away. The university is hoping as one door closes, there's a brighter chapter ahead. Albert DuPont tells me he's glad to be vaccinated because he's a very hands-on professor. So hopefully this vaccination will be a step back to some normalcy. Back to you, Gracie. Thanks, Malik. It sounds like we as a community have something to look forward to. You can find out more about when you'll be eligible for vaccinations on the city website, ready.nola.gov. And with more and more people getting the vaccine, the world could start to see some normalcy. 
there are questions from many Americans who are vaccinated, wondering if that gives them more freedom to travel or visit family. Today, the CDC announced that Americans who are fully vaccinated can get together with other vaccinated people indoors without wearing a mask or social distancing. Vaccinated people can also gather with others who are healthy and have no underlying medical conditions. You can see the full list of guidelines at cdc.gov. The CDC is also predicting that all adults will be able to get the vaccine by the end of the summer. This is good news for Loyola. President Tanya Tetlow announced in an email that Loyola is planning to have full capacity in-person classes for the fall semester, but the university will still offer fully online programs and course options. Anyone who is unable to get the vaccine or have underlying health issues can request accommodations through Human Resources and the Office for Accessible Education. Bikes can be a great option for college students to get around town, but those who rely on bicycles should be careful about where they leave them and how they lock them. Wolfpack reporter Will Ingram explains why we're seeing a spike in stolen bikes. Bikes being stolen is becoming more and more of an issue during the pandemic. Just in the last month, there have been more than 20 bikes reported stolen in the New Orleans area. According to BikeMo, a bike insurance company, there was a 23% increase in stolen bike claims in 2020, and they are only expecting that number to rise this year. Marianne Herrera, a Loyola senior, has had two of her bikes stolen just in the last year. Her first time, she says that she did not think of locking it. Because it was right by me. I wasn't like far away from it. I didn't think about locking it because I was right next to it, basically. She locked the next bike, but with a cable lock. And according to Clark Thompson, Cable locks are garbage. Having a proper lock is key, but it is not the only safety net out there. Bike Index is a free bike registration that Thompson says does if you are ahead of the curve. And so if you uh, if you were to go and log on today, go over, take a photograph of your smoke, photograph of your bike, take a photograph of any distinctive features about your bike that if it's stolen, they're going to help to identify it. Thompson says to make sure to use these U locks. But if all you have is these wire locks, you should with a cable lock, you want to put it somewhere where it is very visible. With pack news, I'm willing. Thank you, Will. Clark Thompson also tells us that a quality bike lock will run you about $40 and is worth the investment. Loyola's homecoming committee kicked off the last week last night with a bang. Students packed the res quad between the dorms to watch the fireworks show, which marked the start of homecoming week. This was the first time Loyola has hosted a fireworks show for homecoming. After lighting up the sky, students participated in a color war and listened to music in the quad to close out the night. Stay tuned for more details about other homecoming events this week. Coming up, students looking for professional clothing now have a unique solution on campus. Stick around to find out how Loyola is now addressing students for success. And we look at a nonprofit that has been giving inner city kids opportunities within an emerging field. See how they improve this city by working with our children. And our final story of the night. The Maroon has been ranked as one of the top student newspapers in the nation by the Princeton Review.
Welcome back. Tucked into a corner in the Communications and Music Complex is a resource aimed at helping students look the part for interviews without breaking the bank. I talked to some student workers who are helping the Wolfpack wardrobe get off the ground. It's a really small place right now. It's pretty cute. It's pretty cozy. Racks on racks. Shelf tops lined with stain and wrinkle savers. That's what you'll see inside the Wolfpack wardrobe's physical space. Work study student Ace McConnell has taken the lead on making inventory accessible online. Our domain name is wolfpackwardrobe.company.site, S-I-T-E. We're still, you know, we're still like working at the kinks and like building it. So it's not quite ready to go, but like you could, people could start checking out our inventory if they want and see if they want to contact us about checking something out. McConnell and Catalina Housley have never met each other, but they're on the same page in tailoring the site to suit shoppers' needs. I just had an interview at a pizza place and like I could wear anything and like show who I am, but like for like an office, like trying to like do a secretary or trying to like a big business, they don't want to see you as like everyday work. They want to see you with your clothing work and like you can buy that stuff at the thrift store and everything, but like it's just still gonna cost you money and money that we don't have right now. Inside the wardrobe space, someone has to keep track of the stock. And right now, that someone is Kayla Gaston. She says she's in it for a couple other reasons too. Just to show them how to style the outfits, how to wear the outfits, how you can make a five-year-old pair of pants look as if it just got off the rack. So it's really fun and it's just about creativity and using your imagination. I got it. As the wardrobe's inventory grows, students will have more opportunities to shop around for pieces that adhere to dress code while still suiting their individual styles. Students who want to shop can reserve a time slot by emailing wolfpackwardrobe at gmail.com. And the wardrobe is also currently taking donations to expand the options for students. Loyola's second homecoming is here. The theme, The Comeback, is dedicated to students as they bounce back from the challenges caused by the pandemic. Events will include a paint party, bonfire, and even a movie night under the stars. The week will close out with Wolf World and the Peace Squad on Friday afternoon at 3.30, where the homecoming queen will be crowned for the first time ever, all woman court. To place your vote for homecoming queen, log on to How Connect. Jobs that protect the environment are one of the fastest growing industries in the U.S. And one new, one new Orleans nonprofit is connecting local kids who are looking for green jobs. Reporter, reporter Liam Kidd spent the day getting an inside look at their training. It may look like a normal woodworking class, but these kids are part of a social program that has been changing the lives of inner city people for over 15 years. Oh uh, yeah, they're giving me opportunities I wouldn't have never got on my own. Louisiana Green Corps is a program that has been helping 18 to 25 year old people gain employment while also making New Orleans a little more environmentally friendly. So we know we're part of this larger effort within our country, within our city, to one, address the huge problem of poverty, uh, specifically racial inequity. Uh, and by doing so, we're also focusing on the, the other crisis that our uh, community faces, New Orleans more so than a lot of other places, or earlier than other places, which is the increased challenge of climate change. Ryan Mattingly is the executive director of Green Corps, and he says that the program is essential for giving young people the skills and connections for jobs that they may seek in the future. So high wage, high demand jobs within green industries, um, whether that's within the emerging stormwater management field, uh, a lot of those jobs are high paying, high wage jobs. Many of the people for Green Corps have been working with young people for years, like Willie Ottman, who says that he feels like more than just a supervisor. And out here with the Green Corps, you know, I'm a program manager, but you know, I'm also the uh, case manager. You know, I'm the counselor, you know, I'm the dad, I'm the granddad, I, all of my kids, that's why I look at it, you know. Green Corps hopes to continue connecting New Orleans youth to more opportunities than ever, especially in such uncertain times. For Wolfpack News, I'm Liam Kidd.
Thank you, Liam. The training program gives the students 12 weeks of experience before they move on to their new workplace. Still to come, what are the news you need to know? Peter Bufo joins us live from Loyola's greenhouse. Peter? Coming up, I'll have a look at a double threat in the forecast. You can achieve a lot using your imagination. <laughs> I mean, I don't like to brag, but... Wait, who's that? And why is she all over these achievement awards? But with STEM, the sky's the limit. Shaboom! Use STEM to envision. Okay, I'm seeing it. Yeah. Invent. You got any ideas? I've got a few, actually. And create a better world. Told you she's super smart. If she can STEM, so can you. Find out more at She Can STEM. Hey, I'm Peter, and I'm here at the greenhouse on the top floor of Monroe Hall. It's a beautiful day here in New Orleans. Even though the day is kind of ending, it's not a cloud in sight. Um, the forecast for the rest of the week, uh, the week says week, expect a little bit more clouds, but about the same temperatures ranging from the low 60s to the mid 70s. Watch out for Sunday though, as currently there's a 30% chance of rain and this year's daylight savings begins. We're losing some hour, we're losing an hour. For now, sunblock and an umbrella in the trunk are a safe bet. Back to you, Gracie and Shadera. Thanks, Peter. More good weather for snowballs. We'll have a look at where to get your fix coming up. Plus, see how the wolf pack performed on the volleyball court, the baseball diamond in the cross country course this past weekend. Me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home, and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi. And welcome back, I'm Will Ingram. A lot of wins for the Wolfpack this weekend. Starting at home in the Den, the Wolfpack volleyball team won both of their games this weekend, defeating Faulkner University in straight sets Friday. Saturday's game brought a little bit of tough luck, though, having to go all the way to five sets against Middle Georgia State. With the wins this weekend, the team remains undefeated in conference play. Now moving to the Diamond. The baseball team could not bring home the last game of the series against Xavier, but with the two wins on Saturday, the series had already been locked in the win column for the pack. The team moves to 10-8 and eight on the season and welcomes Lyon College this weekend. And while the baseball team will welcome Lyon College, the cross-country teams had to travel to Cave City, Arkansas to compete against Lyon College in their third meet of the spring. The men took first through fourth place in the event with Walter Ramsey claiming his first individual win of the season and that's his third of his career. Helping to bring home the third title of the season, the men also had runners finish 7th, 8th, and ninth, claiming six of the top 10 spots. On the women's side, Catherine Calderon finished in the top three for the second straight event, and the pack had three other runners finish in the top 20, taking 12th, 18th, and 19th. Both Ramsey and Calderon were named runners of the week after their performances this weekend. The next time that these teams will hit the course is right back in Cave City on the same course on March 27th. And that's all we have in sports. Thanks, Gracie. Back to y'all. With the warmer weather, it's the perfect time for a snowball, and stands are starting to open. Find out where to get a snowball close to campus after the break. I'll be right back. Hi. You think you're probably sober? Yeah. But you're thinking about taking the back roads home just in case. If you're probably sober, then why would you do that? Good choice. Probably okay isn't okay. If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. That's a full glass of wine. I'll be chatting you later. Spring is here, and people in New Orleans couldn't be any happier. I show you why they're excited. It's March, and snowball season is finally here. As the weather gets warmer, People of all ages are lining up to get their first snowball of the year. Shelby LaSalle is one of the many customers who's been looking forward to eating one. Snowball season is all year round. LaSalle ordered two snowballs for him and his wife Maria. Cherry mint and 
traditional strawberry. Maria, an alum from Loyola, said that she and her family love snowballs. They love them so much that they get excited when they're in season. I love snowballs. I try to go to all different snowball stands and get different flavors. According to Maria, this will help bring the community together in the midst of the coronavirus, which rattled the whole nation last year. It's very exciting because people are able to get out, be protective with their mask, and then they can find a, a place in the shade or in their car and then enjoy a good New Orleans snowball. For students who never ate a snowball, now is their chance to try one at a snowball stand near campus. It's a nice treat and it's definitely New Orleans, um, a New Orleans uh, uh, tradition. What's your favorite snowball, Shadera? I have two actually. I have an almond and coconut. What about you? My favorites are coconut and wedding cake and strawberry. Good taste, good taste. Yeah. You too. And as we say goodbye, here's a live look at the sunset. Thanks for joining us.